Oxford Dictionary defines beauty as a combination of qualities such as shape, color, and form that pleases the aesthetics, especially the sight. But here lies the big problem because a lot of people are actually starting to lose sight of what true beauty really is and instead choose to focus solely on its physical aspects. Whereas some women believe that if they don't fall under a certain physical category, then they are not beautiful. But for some women, beauty is not just solely confined to its physical attributes. For example, Once upon a time, there was a small group of children, very much like you guys here, who wanted to do something more than playing in the sun all day. They found a tuition centre that taught English, mathematics and one more subject that caught their eye, Somali, which is their native language. They were so excited, they joined the classes right away and they never looked back since. This small group of children has now multiplied into a group of 100 between 4 to 25 years old and is now called Fuji School. Fuji School is the brainchild of two girls and one of them is Deborah Henry. The end. So, what do you guys think about the story? Do you guys like it? Yeah. Being a beauty queen is so much more than just looking beautiful and Deborah stands as living proof of this as she plays her role in supporting the cause she is most passionate about, education. And even as capable beings with the gift of intelligence, reason and moral, we still cry for help at times. It should be our duty to lend a helping hand to our fellow humans in need. But charity shouldn't just stop at humans because our furry friends need just as much love and attention. Meet Tanuja Anandan. She's another beauty queen who fervently advocates for a different group of living beings. But then again, what is beauty to these two flawless beauties? If you ask anyone what beauty is to them, everyone comes up with a different answer. I think it's a very subjective thing and, you know, a lot of people think it's very physical. But when you meet someone who may be physically beautiful, after a while of getting to know the person, it's the little things in their character and personality which really attract you to a character. And so something that's seemingly very beautiful may actually be quite ugly at the end of the day. So I think it's really about being true to yourself and honest with yourself and, and asking what really matters to you. So beauty is definitely, you know, ex ac accepting everything that you are, all your flaws and what you love about yourself. And also to me, I think it's very important Personally, because I'm an animal enthusiast, being extra kind to the voiceless as an animal and just trying and not hurting others in general. Being a beauty queen is not just being a pretty face because, you know, if you're a pretty face and an empty vessel, it can only take you so far. And um, the reason I joined Miss World Malaysia was because of Miss World. I grew up watching the pageant from the age of five and, you know, growing up, I was pretty lucky that I had a mother who sit down and told me like, you know what, these women who win the title, they have a voice heard world over, it comes with responsibilities and um, naturally growing up for me was all about the animals, so for me it's, it's a calling I believe. Yeah. You can judge a society based on the way they treat animals because a lot of people think animals are below us and don't deserve as much as humans do, but you know an animal is a life and they need to be treated with respect and kindness and that also shows the quality and the caliber of a person that you are. So, you know, find something that works for you. There's so many ways you can help out and never use the excuse, I'm only one person, I can't do anything because that's not true at all. Don't you just envy beauty queens and their flawless complexion? Well, guess what? Nothing is impossible with makeup. I'm going to show you how to have that flawless face you want. Firstly, start off with a clean face. Remember to cleanse, tone, moisturize, and apply sunscreen. And it's extremely important to sanitize your hands before applying makeup to prevent bacteria that leads to breakouts. Now, let's go straight to foundation. I'm mixing two different cream foundations to get that perfect shade for my skin tone. Then, apply the foundation in circular motions with a buffing brush. This helps to blend everything well and achieve a flawless finish. Next, cover any imperfections with concealer, like your under eye circles, redness around your nose and other blemishes. Pat the concealer with your fingers for natural looking coverage. 
Then, brush some powder foundation all over your face to remove shine and set everything in place. Now, I'm picking up some matte brown eyeshadow as bronzer to contour my face. Subtly change the shape of your face by creating shadows on the hollows of your cheeks, temples, forehead, and along your jawline. Seriously, bronzers are heaven sent! Finally, bring back some color to your face by applying a peach cream blush on the apples of your cheeks. Cream blushes are best blended with fingers for a natural and longer lasting color. That's it for the flawless face routine. Now you can either choose to finish off the rest of your usual makeup or just step out of the house and get ready to turn some heads. Have fun! Next on G Thang. Oh, I'm just so pretty. I'll get anything in life, you know. Yeah. Just, it doesn't just go at the bottom. Of it. As the popular saying goes, never judge a book by its cover. Success doesn't just fall from the sky and straight onto their laps, even though they're beauty queens. Both Deborah and Tanuja constantly struggle and strive to support their respective calling. <laughs> Going back to what you do and all, mm. I'm sure there's so many things on your plate, modeling, emceeing, events mm. and all that. And you know, it's so easy to sort of push volunteer work or animal welfare in the bottom of the priority list, mm -hmm. but you obviously still keep it mm -hmm. as a big priority. You make time for it. How do you do it? You know, I always say when it's a passion and it's so strong in you, it doesn't just go at the bottom of things. You know, it's something that it comes very naturally and you just keep doing it. What keeps me going is when I see all the other dogs who have now come out and are looking so healthy and happy today, and you see that light in their eyes, yeah. I think that just keeps you going. Yeah. You know, and you could have, you, you, you think like what could have happened to them if we hadn't taken them out, you mm. know, they wouldn't be here wagging their tails and coming and jumping up on you every time you come here. So that's the spirit that just keeps you you know, we started it, we didn't have enough resources, we didn't have anything, we just started it because we, we saw the end goal. The end goal was to provide education and we saw the need was so great for these children. And that has really driven me. It's, it's weird, like when I look back to the past four years, I don't even know how we survived, I don't even know how we've come this far. But this was it, nothing could shake it, it had to work and it just had to. I always felt that I had to work hard. It was never like, oh, I'm just so pretty, I'll get anything in life, you know, yeah. just have to smile. Yeah. I, it was never like that. That's not gonna make you win the race. It's not gonna make you get the best exam results. So it really depends what's important to you as a person. I mean, speaking about beauty pageants here solely, right? When I went for Miss World and I met all these 122 <laughs> stunning, heavenly sent women, yeah. I was pretty much, you know, you get taken aback for a while because when you look at all these girls, they're all like perfect, yeah. uh, hair, perfect, no hair everything, nothing. <laughs> and, but then when, when all the makeup comes out and all the hair extensions come out and everything, you'd be surprised if they're all actually just plain girls like me and you who have, you know, boyfriend problems and, you know, family issues and, oh, I don't feel so good today. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we're all just normal girls, yeah. you know, it's just that, who have, yeah. Who are blessed with great genes. <laughs> it's also extra work. It's a lot of work. You know, it's a lot of effort. You know, as people say, you know, there's no, there's no such person as an ugly person. Despite how people speak about character preceding looks and that nobody is perfect, sitting next to these two close to perfect women, I couldn't help but feel a little green with envy. Girls like you make it look so easy. You have the fabulous glitzy life. <laughs> You know, the cause that you're all for, you can be, you know, super glam, yet you can bring yourself down. What kind of work goes into it? I mean, oh my do you work out every day? Do you go for vampire facials? <laughs> what, what kind of work goes into, you know, to being glitzy and to being really just casual every day, going down to like that level? It's to not take yourself too seriously. A lot of that. Yes. I think that's something that a lot of girls yes. have difficulties with. Or guys, everyone actually. Some people, they, they get so caught up in a specific thing that they do that they think defines them. I must admit, like at one point in my life, I did do that. I was a very serious person and I, you know, I got caught up in a lot of other things and not just, hey, what a, just me, just what do I want, you know? Yeah. Ask yourself that question and not, not worry what someone's going to think or what someone's going to say. So mm -hmm. that's one thing. Um, but I do work hard in certain things that are important to me. So. Um, my diet, my food, my, my actually I wouldn't say diet, that's, that's such a, it's a scary yeah, word when you yeah, say yeah, diet, yeah, yeah. but health, like yeah. my health and, and exercise regime is really important to me. I, pre I, I think prevention is better than cure. It's very important to stay fit and mm -hmm. I don't like to so say you don't have to put on tons of makeup to look good. I mean, looking 
you know, presentable and just groomed simply. I think it's enough. It's more than enough. You know, you don't need to have like fake eyelashes on. Yeah. I'm probably the only beauty queen who totally, hates absolutely it. hates it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think just loving yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, just simply enjoy do doing what you enjoy and um, just keeping fit and healthy and eating right and sleeping right. Of course, always remember you know to take care of your body. It's your temple ultimately. You've only got one, so. Do you have an old pair of denim hiding in your closet? Don't throw it away, turn it into a cute pair of cut-off jeans. Firstly, measure how long you'd like your shorts to be. Then, mark the sides slightly longer than the length you want on the top and bottom. Make sure both sides are of the same length. Next, use a sharp pair of scissors and cut across the marks you made. And here comes the fun part. Let me introduce you to something called fraying. Get a mini pair of thongs, preferably one with sharp teeth like this. Grab onto the edges of the jeans and start pulling out the thread. This step might take a little bit more time, so just be patient and keep fraying. I promise you'll love the results. Now, draw any simple shape you like on one side of the jeans and cut accordingly. Be careful not to cut the inner pockets. Then, choose the fabric design you like. Cut a small piece of cloth and place it under your cutout shape to add some color to your jeans. After that, fray the edges of your shape to remove the excess pen marks. Next, Pick a colourful thread and pin the fabric into place to ease the sewing process. Now, start sewing. Always start from inside out to prevent a visible knot. The stitches don't have to be too neat as long as you follow the outline of the cutout shape. Add an extra round of stitches if you want the coloured thread to look more striking. Then, tie a knot at the end to secure everything in place. Flip your jeans to the back and start working on the back pockets. I'm going with fabric paint. At this point, just let your creativity flow. I like my stuff striking, so I'm going to add some bright colours to this boring old jeans by painting a rainbow-inspired design. Remember to clean the brush before dipping into a new colour to maintain the true colours. I decided to leave some spots untouched to highlight the denim texture. And once you're done, just leave the fabric paint to dry. Finally, add some finishing touches to your jeans. I snipped off a small strip from both sides of the shorts to intensify the rugged design. And it's basically done. Now you have your own personalized cut-off jeans. A girl will never have too many denim pieces. So go through your wardrobe and design your very own jeans today. Next on G Thang. Can you teach me something basic like? Huh? One of my favorite pastimes is hunting for vintage pieces and ransacking through my mom's old clothes for some classic hand me downs. Many people think that wearing vintage needs a lot of courage, but if you manage to include vintage items in your daily outfits, you'll end up with original and extremely stylish looks. Here are some tips on how to pull off this fashion style. Firstly, avoid dressing head to toe in vintage clothes. Now, you don't want to look like you just stepped out of a time machine. Combine the right amount of contemporary and vintage trends to achieve a chic vintage style. I decided to incorporate this beautiful vintage floral blouse with a pair of colored jeans and ankle strap platforms. You can also put some zest into your outfit with a vintage hat. I added some contrast into this whole look with this lovely fedora. Next, weaving in a modern piece like this denim vest with a vintage dress also helps to create an up-to-date vintage look. Another good option is pairing a vintage dress with a modern leather belt. You still want the dress to be the spotlight, but adding a basic belt enhances your whole silhouette by adding a nip at the waist. 
So try wearing vintage. Look at old photos for inspiration. Take into account that these clothes have a story behind them and wear them as pieces of history with the right attitude. This place is such a great learning environment. It reminds me of one of those private tuition centers that are more cozy and personal. I wish I could do something with the students, so I spoke to the co-founder, Shikin, to see if I can drop a little footprint here today. And she recommended the most interesting class for me to invade. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. How's everyone feeling? Good. Do you like Somali class? Yes. Yes, right? Since it's Somali class, I can't just be you know, speaking English, English all the time. Can you teach me something basic like, hello, my name is Zer? Uh, of course I can. Okay, you. okay, how do I? You can say first, assalamu alaikum. Uh huh, assalamu Okay, that's gonna be. Can you break it down for me? Okay, Maga slowly, ay. slowly. Maga N. Maga N. Maga N. Waha. Waha. La. 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 Ha. Ha. Zer. Zer. Magahe, Magahe, Waha, Ladaha, the. Man, I would probably take three years just to master that, and that's why I have so much respect for these kids who mastered the English language in a reasonably short time. So two years ago, three years ago, some of them were first arrived, they couldn't speak English, and they couldn't write their names, they were so quiet, they, they had no confidence, and especially like a lot of the girls, because in the Somali culture, they can be a lot more submissive, yeah, yeah. And, um, and just very quiet in general, so to see them here, it's so inspiring to see Deborah and Shikin avidly spreading awareness about something which is usually spoken about with hushed voices in our society. They truly believe everyone deserves equal rights in this world, just like this special person I'm about to meet. Kamal was um, one of our first students when we started in uh, 2008. Chick uh -huh. and I used to actually give him tuition in English Personally, and math. Personally, yes, personal what kind tuition. What teacher is Deborah? Is she strict? Uh, is she fun? Is she... <laughs> when it comes to teaching, like there's three levels, and I think she got the fourth level. Which what's the What's the fourth level? Yeah. She's very fun to teach. Oh, yeah. very fun. Really? Okay, that's yeah. nice. And you speak very well, but five yeah. years ago, no English, no English <laughs> at all. Yeah. And this is like truly the product dream of... Dream came true. It's wow. like a dream came true. Wow, wow. And, okay, what, what would you want to be when you grow up? Uh, my number one dream is to become a fashion designer. <laughs> Fashion design. Very cool. When you look at him, you don't yeah. think that, right? <laughs> the model. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. <laughs> I look forward. <laughs> Since I started here, like with the Somali community and, and with Fuji School, I always imagined that in like 15, 20 years to come, we'll I'll reopen the newspaper, I'll watch news, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, that was one of our Somali kids yeah. doing something amazing yeah. in Somalia, in another part of the world. Because yeah. I, I don't know, I just see there's an energy and there's a, there's a sort of a spark that they have in them, despite their circumstances, to do so much for not just for themselves, but for the community and for others. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really see like a lot of, I see a lot of hope. Yeah, a lot of potential, a lot of potential. You're so young as well, and you already have all this drive. Dreams. See you, bye Kamal. Thank you for me. <laughs> well, like they said, there are so many other ways for us to volunteer our service to this world besides helping humans. So I decided to spend a day at the Malaysian Independent Animal Rescue Shelter with Tanuja and Pushpa, the founder. Hello. And what's his name? He's Tansri. Tansri. Ah. Hello, Tansri, nice to meet you. <laughs> we rescued Tansri from the pound last year. Why? The day, the day before they put, her, put him down. Well, basically, they just uh, gather all these dogs, strays. Yeah, because they're strays. They strays know. without license, they put down. Yeah. I see, I see. And who's this? This is Shorty! As you see, she just ran up here. Yeah. You know, she's, she's she being, wants attention. Yeah, she's so. being a bit jealous. You can, you can see she's blocking Tansri. <laughs> As a dog lover myself, I wanted to meet all the dogs they have and find out more about what they do here. Who knows, I might actually decide to volunteer here one day. How do people hear about your place? I mean, you know, it's quite small in a corner behind the station. <laughs> we try and push as much as we can on our social media. You know, we do a lot of... Uh, she has adoption, drives and... They're all pretty obedient. Yeah, very obedient, yeah, very obedient. 
trained by the way they just you know i guess when there's then there's love and care you know naturally they just they behave so well around people i wish i could adopt every one of them but in case you're wondering about the cages there's actually a reason behind it somebody poisoned our dog yeah huh and this person threw poison chicken and she ate it and she died within 15 minutes yeah. and you were there Ah, she died in my car. I was rushing her to the hospital. Oh, wow. Wow. If you could say something to the people who threw in the, the, those pieces of chicken, what would you say? You don't know what I lost. Yeah. Why would people do such things? Tell me about it. Why would people do such things? I don't know. It's just... Um, it really baffles me myself. We take them in and we give them so much of love and care and to have that happen to them at the end of the day. It's yeah, I know. Very, very, yeah. There is a very horrible place up there for people like that. And as if this case wasn't disturbing enough, I came face to face with the heartbreaking effects of animal abuse. Can you believe that Princess is a four-year-old pure-breed Siberian Husky? Doesn't look it, right? Well, that's because she was found at a puppy mill where they breed dogs continuously and prioritize profit over the well-being of the animals. Brought her in is about a week plus now, and as you can see, she's got hair yeah, going back. Yeah, going yeah. back already. If this is her current condition, I can't imagine how, was how she, she was before this. She was this. very, very black. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. And her eyes and all were droopy. You can could, you could tell, you can see from a dog's eyes that, you know, she, she just gave up hope. She's yeah. like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to live She was anymore. more skinnier than this. Yeah. What? She was nothing. She's if that's even good. possible. Yeah. So what would you say you need most at this point of time? At, at this point shelter? of time, you need a proper land. Land. The problem is, you know, it floods. And when it floods, it's, we flood can reach up to six feet high as well at times. And um, we have a platform now too. But you know, it would be nice if we can have a land where you know they can, we can just let them go. We don't have to worry every time it rains and mm -hmm. rush and come and you know call volunteers for help and mm -hmm. things like that. So, is there anything I can help today? Yes, you can. You can give them a shower. You yeah. can feed them. You wanna go and try? All right, let's do let's it. Go. Let's do it. You know, there is just as much ugliness in this world as there is beauty. It just depends on what we choose to focus on and it's almost groundbreaking to see these two seemingly perfect ladies getting down and dirty, trying their level best to take away some of the pains plaguing the world we live in. And after my time with these amazing girls, Winston Churchill's words ring in my head. You make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. So don't be afraid to give it all you got, especially when you believe in something. When I was a little girl, I remember watching these fabulous women flaunting their elegance and their grace on glamorous stages. And I remember the small, tiny, cute bikinis, the gorgeous evening gowns, and of course, the sparkly and exquisite tiaras in the end. And I remember mostly wanting to be that girl on stage. But standing here today, I can truly say deep from within my heart with full confidence and full belief that true beauty indeed does come from deep within you. And that is my definition of what beauty truly is. Next week on Jithang. Wow, this is so surreal because a few days ago I got a call and I've never been for any proms. I wonder if you'll go with my dress though. I feel like I'm getting married.